Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Jessica Kamir, and today we are going to learn about Ramadan, part two. I hope you watched Ramadan, part one. So this is the continuation. This is an English lesson designed for ninth graders. I hope you like it. Can you, can you help organize someone's day who observes Ramadan? Can you categorize Ramadan observances? Can you identify the foods eaten in different countries during Ramadan? If you answered no, don't you worry. We're going to find out all of these things. First, I'd like to review some old words that we learned in the previous presentation. And I would also like to introduce you to some new vocabulary. So sacred. Sacred means holy, OK? The Quran is a sacred book. It is a holy book. Fasting, or in Arabic, swam. That means not eating. But in Ramadan, if you remember, fasting is not eating and not drinking. Suar, that is the pre-dawn meal. That is the meal that you eat before the sun rises. It is usually a small meal, okay, with dates and apricots. Iftar, iftar, now this is the big meal, okay, that everybody eats together after the sun sets. If you remember, we talked about iftar. You celebrate, you eat together with your friends and family, your extended family. And then after you eat this great big meal, you go and visit people. Okay, you go to their houses and say hi. Eid al-Fitar. This is a three-day festival, which is at the end of Ramadan. It's a celebration, a three-day celebration. Charity. Okay, charity is giving money or things to the needy. Now remember, during Ramadan, Charity is a really significant part of the Ramadan holiday, okay, to give people money or food that are in need, all right? In the previous presentation, I asked you to find a charity that you can relate to. Observe. Observe means to follow or to follow the rules, okay? So to, when you observe Ramadan, that means you fast. You follow the rule of fasting. You don't eat and you don't drink from sunrise to sunset. Discipline. Discipline means self-control. So during Ramadan, you need to have discipline, right? Not to eat and drink during the daylight hours. A mosque. A mosque is a place of worship for the Muslims. And the Quran. The Quran is the Islam's, is Islam's holy book. Let's watch. This now, we're going to watch a clip, which it's a review of Ramadan. from Brain, Brain Pop, so thanks Brain Pop. Here we go. <laughs> I told you, we have to wait until the sun sets. Dear Tim and Moby, what is Ramadan and why does it start at a different time every year? From Janan. We're actually about to have a Ramadan meal with Nadia at her parents' restaurant. Not yet. Anyway, Janan, Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. It's the most sacred time of year for those who follow the religion of Islam. Around the world, millions of Muslims, or people who follow Islam, observe Ramadan with prayer and fasting. Well, the Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar, which means it's based on the phases of the moon. Each month starts when the first sliver of the crescent moon appears in the sky and ends 28 or 29 days later. The Islamic calendar is just 354 days long. So in our calendar, the Gregorian calendar, Ramadan starts 11 days earlier every year. The rules for Ramadan are laid out in the Quran, Islam's holy book. Muslims believe this sacred text was revealed to a man named Muhammad, who is considered to be the final messenger of God. According to tradition, the first revelation came during the month of Ramadan, about 1,400 years ago. That's the main reason it's considered so holy. The best-known Ramadan commandment involves fasting, or not eating. This is called psalm in Arabic. Basically, Muslims are forbidden to eat and drink during daylight hours for the entire month. Right, they can eat when it's dark out. 
Sick people, senior citizens, young kids, and pregnant women don't have to fast at all, though. On a typical day during Ramadan, Muslims get up really early, before the crack of dawn. Families eat a special pre-dawn meal together called suhoor. Once the sun appears, they perform their morning prayers, and the fast begins. It lasts until the sun sets. Muslims aren't even allowed to drink water until then. Uh, yeah, it is really tough, but that's part of the point. During Ramadan, people of the Muslim faith practice discipline and self-control. Well, as the day goes on, people's bodies keep urging them to eat and drink. They have to use willpower to overcome the temptation. So the fast is like practice for showing restraint during the rest of the year. That's true. Ramadan isn't just about food. Muslims are supposed to avoid all bad practices from smoking and lying and even gossiping. Charity plays an important role, too. While they're fasting, Muslims give thanks for what they have and consider the hardships and hunger of the less fortunate. People are encouraged to give as much as they can to charity and do as many good deeds as possible. Well, spending time with family and friends is also a big part of the holiday. When each day ends, observers of Ramadan gather together for a special meal called iftar. That's what we're about to have ourselves. They break their fast with water, milk, and sweet fruits called dates, and then eat dinner together. Afterward, they'll often go to a mosque, a place of worship, to hear a portion of the Quran read out loud. Oh, the end of Ramadan is one of the most joyous times of year for Muslims. It's celebrated as a three-day festival called Eid al-Fitr. People dress up, exchange gifts, eat special meals, and celebrate with as many friends and relatives as possible. And those are just the basics of Ramadan. You can learn more about it at your school or local library. So, Moby, I think it's okay for you to eat now. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. All right, guys. Good to see you again. I hope you enjoyed that video. It gave us a review of the vocabulary words that we went over, okay? Now we're going to continue. Let's celebrate, okay? The new moon. Ramadan officially ends when the first new moon appears. So you might be asking yourself, well, what does a new moon look like? So here I have a picture of a new moon. A new moon happens every 29 and a half days. It's when the side of the moon facing the earth is in total darkness. So the picture that I have here is almost a full moon, okay? We almost cannot see anything. So when there's a full moon, that's when Ramadan's over, and it's time to party, time to celebrate. So how do they celebrate? Well, they have Id al-Fitar. Now, if you saw in the movie that we just saw, they spelled Id al-Fitar. Instead of A-L, they used U-L. Both of them are okay, okay? There's different ways to spell it because you have to remember, it's in Arabic, it's not really English, so different ways. Like Petah Tikva, sometimes they spell um, it with a Q and sometimes they use a K, so they're both correct. Now, the festival or the celebration of Eid al-Fitar or the feast of fast breaking, it marks the end of the month of Ramadan and it's the beginning of the month of Shawwal. Shawwal, it's the 10th month in the Islamic calendar. Remember the lunar calendar. Ed al-Fitar is celebrated during the first three days of Shahal. Okay, so here you see we have pictures. Look how yummy that food looks. All right? Olives, cheese, barekas. It looks great. And you see all these hands here? That's because it's important to celebrate with your friends and your family. The more, the merrier. Okay? Now, I want to teach you about Ed al-Fitar around the world. Okay? Throughout the Muslim world, Id al-Fitar is marked by giving presents or gifts, family gatherings, gatherings or get-togethers, okay, when people come together as a group, feasting, feasting means to eat, and celebration, okay? But each country has its own unique observances, which often center around food. Now we're going to look at some examples. So we said that each country has unique observances. Unique is something or someone that is unlike anything else, and observances are the practice of following a custom or a rule. OK, 
okay? So how these different countries celebrate is a little bit different. But in all the countries, it, it focuses on food, which is my favorite topic. Food, I love food. So let's get to it. Let's check out some countries. Iraq. Muslim families gather for breakfast, uh, for a breakfast of buffalo cream, honey, and bread. After Eid services at the mosque, there's a family lunch that contains a date pastry called kalicha. Okay, I just want to remind you, Eid, it literally means a festival, okay, or a feast in Arabic. So after they have these, uh, after they pray at the mosque, they get together in Iraq and they eat this beautiful um, pastry here with dates. It looks really good. But if you're on a diet, I don't recommend it. Now let's get into Egypt, okay? I see powdered sugar. You see, powdered sugar is this uh, white powder over here. That's powdered sugar. People bake and exchange. Exchange means that they give or they take something in return for something else. So people bake and exchange special, co co uh, sorry guys, special cookies called kak, which are filled with nuts and covered in powdered sugar. Now, of course, I don't recommend these cookies for someone who has an allergy to nuts. So it's important maybe to ask your friends before giving them this cookie. But it looks delicious. Let's get into Somalia, okay? Traditional dishes include rice, meat, vegetables, and a thin bread called anjira. Okay, so traditional uh, dish, traditional means it's typical or normal for something or someone. For example, the traditional food in Israel is falafel, right, or shawarma. For, so here's a picture, here you have the anjira right here, okay, it's that thin bread. Now for dessert, which is my favorite, there's a sweet, dense confection. Confection another, is another way to say a very sweet food. It's called halva. Look at this halva. It's flavored with cumin and cookies fried in oil. Now in Israel, we also have halva, right? There's tons and tons of flavors. Um, I know that when I go visit my brother in New York, he makes special requests for halva. I bring back about 10 different kinds. So in Somalia and in Israel, I guess they both like halva. Let's get into India and Pakistan. The most popular dishes include sweet puddings, made with toasted noodles, mixed in with milk, sugar, raisins, and nuts. The dishes are called savaya or shir korma. Now, I just want to apologize if I'm not pronouncing these desserts correctly. You have to remember I'm not an Arabic speaker, but I'm trying my best, okay? So here you have this um, delicious rice pudding. When I'm in New York, I usually always go to Indian buffets. It's my favorite, and I always eat this for dessert. It's really yummy, I recommend it. Malaysia. Most dishes are based around beef rendang, which is a spicy, slow-cooked meat dish made with coconut, ginger, and chili powder. Okay, this reminds me of brisket. It's that slow-cooked meat. Okay, it looks really nice, but it's spicy. So if you don't like things hot, don't eat this. Indonesia. Okay, so the traditional id dishes include a spice cake called lapis legit, which is also known as a thousand layer cake. Now, if you look at the picture here, the reason they call it a thousand layer cake, because look, look at all of these different layers, okay? It looks like it's got about a thousand in there. Now, interestingly, the dish, it originated or it came from the Netherlands, and it was brought to Indonesia by Dutch colonists. Okay, let's watch. I'm going to show you a clip about Id al Fitar, okay, in many places around the world. Hope you enjoy it. Ramadan is a sacred time in Islam. For Muslims, the four weeks of fasting expresses one's devotion to Allah. 
high point of Ramadan is a three-day festival called Bayram, which begins on the last day of fasting. A lot of time is spent shopping and picking out things that will appeal to guests or one's own family. There's so much excitement involved, as it is a day of great gratification. You fasted for four weeks and Bayram rewards you for your efforts. Bayram is meant to express the sense of gratitude for having been able to experience Ramadan. Now that the four weeks of fasting during the daytime are over, life suddenly revolves around food. Fried vegetables and stuffed grape leaves are among the traditional delicacies served. Bayram is very much a holiday of sharing and is supposed to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. This explains why it's customary for Muslims to give pastries and sweets to their neighbors. One of the most important events in the Muslim calendar is the Eid prayer, which marks the end of Ramadan and the beginning of Bayram. It's a prayer no Muslim would dream of missing. In fact, many get to the mosque early to ensure themselves a good spot. Everyone faces Mecca while praying, as it is the religious center of Islam. While the men pray, the women are back home preparing breakfast. Spending time together as a family begins with kissing the hands of one's elders. Afterwards, everyone can gather around the table and eat. From this moment on, fasting is absolutely taboo. According to Islam, only the devils fast during this time. Now, there are to be no more acts of self-denial. Everyone is meant to join in the festivities and have a good time. Before the meal has ended, the father of the family says a closing prayer at the table to thank God for their well-being. On these three days, you're ready for guests to come and go at any time. No visits are planned. People are welcome to come and go as they please. For three days, it's open door. Everyone plays host and gets to be a guest. The table is set again and again with people sitting down to multiple feasts. All of my colleagues at work are German, and they know relatively little about our festival. I know comparatively more about Christmas. I explain to them that it's the Turkish equivalent of Christmas. During Bayram, it's customary for young people to visit the elderly. Children are given gifts of money. In fact, everyone gets little presents, trinkets and the like as a token of appreciation. Bayram is a time for the entire family to come together, but friends and work colleagues are just as welcome. Each visitor is invited to sit down at the table. It's a custom born out of a desire to share with one's fellow man, a sentiment that is universal among Muslims during Bayram. Hey guys, I hope that video gave you a taste of the festival of Id al-Fitar. It looks like so much fun. We're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we'll continue learning about Ramadan. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.
Hello everyone, welcome back from your break. I hope the break gave you some time to get power back and ready to learn more about Ramadan. So weight, let's talk about weight. Very important, for, especially for women, right? You thinking, if you're going to be fasting for 30 days, you gotta lose some weight, right? Well, studies show, not necessarily. Based on the Journal of Public Health, Ramadan observers lose on average about one kilogram of weight over the four weeks or the 30 days, and the lost weight is quickly regained. In brief, or in short, you don't lose weight. What a bummer. This is a graphic organizer, okay? We have different pictures. We have the pre-dawn, okay? Do you guys remember what meal you have at the pre-dawn? We have a picture of sunrise. The sun is starting to come out. Here is during the day, the daylight hours, sundown or sunset, and here are nighttime hours. So timing plays a crucial or very important role in the observance of Ramadan. I want you to use the pictures below to show how its rituals and celebrations are spread over a day. I'm gonna give you about a minute to think and to think what happens during these different times of day. What happens at pre-dawn? What happens at sunrise? What happens at daylight hours? What happens at sundown? And what happens during the nighttime hours? So one minute, think, and then we're gonna go over it together. Okay guys, time is up. Let's go over it together. So, what happens at pre-dawn, before the sun rises? Did you guess Suhar? Good job. Now what happens at sunrise? The fast begins, right? When the sun comes out, no food, no drinking. Gotta start that fast. What happens during the daylight hours when the sun is out? Fasting, continuing to fast. Sundown, when the sun sets. Still fasting, okay, but now during the night when there's no sun at all, it's party time, iftar. Remember, that's when you get together with your family and your friends and you eat, you eat and you drink vegetables, bread, meat, pastries, right? And then after this iftar, after this meal, you go visit your friends. Sounds fun. Now we have a task. We need to categorize. So Ramadan observances generally fall into three categories, okay? The three categories are discipline, charity, communal celebration. Communal comes from the word community, okay? And celebration is a party or other special event that you have for an important occasion, holiday, etc. So Id al-Fitar, do you remember? That's a celebration. So now I'm going to read these sentences to you and I want you to tell me, do they fit into the discipline category, the charity category, or the communal celebration? I'll read them out loud and then I will give you a minute to figure it out by yourself, and then we'll go over it. 
Number one, donating food to the hungry. What do you think? Number two, fasting during the day. Number three, eating suhar before dawn. Number four, avoiding smoking and drinking. Number five, giving money to the poor. Number six, breaking the fast with iftar. Number seven, building homes for the homeless. Number eight, avoiding lying and gossiping. Lying means not telling the truth and gossiping means you're talking about people and not, and not in a nice way necessarily. And the last one, exchanging gifts with family and friends. So if you remember, exchanging means I give you something and then you give me something. So it's like we're trading. So I'm going to give you a minute to think, categorize these into the three categories we talked about, discipline, charity, communal celebration. So I'm going to give you a minute from now. Okay, everybody, time is up. Um, I just want to make an important point here. When I talk about avoid smoking and avoid drinking, every time when I mention drinking, I'm not talking about alcohol because usually Muslims, they don't drink alcohol. So when I say drinking, I mean water, soda, juice, okay? That's the type of drinking I'm referring to. So now let's go over this together. Donating food to the hungry. What category did you put this into? If you wrote charity, then that's correct. Fasting during the day, not eating and not drinking during the day. Remember, drinking water, soda, juice, all these things. This is discipline, right? You need to have discipline because you feel thirsty and you feel hungry, but not to drink and not to eat takes discipline, control, not to do these things. Eating suhar before the dawn, that's celebration, okay? Eating with family and friends, that's celebration, party, fun. Avoiding or not smoking and drinking, this is discipline, this takes self-control, okay? Right, when someone is trying to quit smoking, they need the discipline or self-control to not smoke even though they have that urge to do so. When you give money to the poor, this is charity. You're helping the poor by giving them money. Breaking the fast with iftar, this is celebration, okay? Iftar, if you remember, it's at nighttime. It's how you break the fast with your friends and family you eat. You're partying, you're celebrating, you're enjoying. Building homes for the homeless. Charity, you're helping the homeless by helping them to have homes to live in. Avoiding lying and gossiping. This is discipline, okay? Exchanging or changing gifts with family and friends. Celebration something nice and fun to do. Now it's a quiz time. So I hope you paid attention to the video we watched. I hope you paid attention to all the things that I said. And let's test your knowledge now, okay? Number one, which of these images or pictures shows the phase of the moon on the first night of Ramadan? Great. B, a 
okay? This is the crescent moon. That shows the first night of Ramadan. Now, do you remember which moon, which picture of which moon shows us when it's the end of Ramadan? Well, the answer would be A, when you don't see the moon, right? It's called the new moon when it's in total darkness, the moon. So A would be the picture to represent the end of Ramadan. B is the beginning of Ramadan, and the picture of the moon at A is the end. Number two, fill in the blank. The Quran is to Islam as mm, is to Christianity. So the answer here is the Bible. See, you remember the Quran is the holy book for Muslims, and the Bible is the holy book for Christians. So the answer is C. Number three. Which of these events begins earliest in the day during Ramadan? A, the fast, B, the iftar meal, C, the suhar meal, or D, morning prayers? What do you think? It's C. Remember, before the sun rises, that's when you have your morning meal. Okay? It's the first thing that, excuse me, it's the first thing that happens. Number four. In Islam, Self-discipline or self-control is a major virtue. It's a major part. What's another example of a virtue? A, overeating. B, respecting your parents. C, drinking water when you're thirsty. Or D, reading the newspaper. So the answer here is respecting your parents. That's a virtue. That's a very good thing to do. Respect your parents. Listen to them. Number five. What is the significance of these items? Now, you see in this picture, I don't know if it's clear to you, but in that picture, it's dates, okay? So what is the significance of them? A, Muslims, Muslims eat them to break their fast during Ramadan. B, Muslims donate them to the poor during Ramadan. C, Muslims give them to family members on Id al-Fitar. Or D, Muslims use them to count out the days of Ramadan. What do you think? The answer is A, Muslims eat them to break their fast during Ramadan, okay? They eat dates, apricots, they drink sweet milk, okay? Number six, what can you infer from the fact that fasting also plays a role in the Jewish and Christian faiths? So if you remember, in, um, when I did my presentation on Ramadan part one, we talked about the different religions and what they have in common, okay? And we said that fasting is one of the things that they have in common, all right? So A, all three are basically the same religion. B, that Christians and Jews borrowed the idea of fasting from Islam. C, that these three religions share common traits. Or D, that all three religions are based on the idea of controlling one's appetite. So the answer here is... See, these three religions share common traits or common beliefs or common practices and traditions, okay? Number seven, which of these is an example of self-discipline or self-control? A, having a soda when you're thirsty. B, going swimming when it's hot outside. C, running five miles every day to train for a marathon. Or D, Thanking your parents when they give you a birthday gift. So, which is an example of self-discipline? C. Running five miles every day to train for a marathon. It's true. You need self-discipline and self-control to practice, to get up in the morning or at night, after work, before work, whenever you have time, to get that jog in. Because if you don't practice, if you don't run, you won't be able to run the marathon. Number eight. Which of the following is associated with both Swam and Id al-Fitar? A, fasting. B, self-denial. C, giving. Or D, fireworks. Let's check it out. C, giving. Okay? Remember, you give presents and gifts. Number nine. What is this building called? Mm, do you guys remember? This is the building where Muslims go and they pray. Is it called A, a swam, B, an id, C, an iftar, or D, a mosque? What do you think? 
The answer is D, a mask. Okay, because if you remember, A, a swan, that's fasting. B, an id, that's a celebration or a festival. C, an iftar, that's the meal that they have every night when the sun goes down, okay, to celebrate and to eat after not eating or drinking the whole day. So this is a mosque, this building here. Number 10, what does Ramadan have in common with the American holiday of Thanksgiving? Okay, A, both holidays revolve around eating lots of food. B, both holidays involve parades and sporting events. C, both holidays are solemn religious events. Or D, both holidays emphasize family and gratitude. Okay, now I feel like there could be two answers here, but I'd like you to pick the best answer. Okay, what's the best answer? What do they have in common? So D, both holidays emphasize family and gratitude. Okay, I thought that maybe the answer could also be A, because both holidays revolve around eating lots of food, but right, for Ramadan, that's you eat the lots of food at the end of the day or when you have the festival of Eid al-Fitar and Thanksgiving you also, but the, I think the main message here, the most important thing they have in common is that you're with your family and you're saying, gratitude means you're saying, you know, thank you, okay? Research, okay, your final task, are you ready? I want to know, I want you to go online and find out for me what are the five pillars of Islam, okay? Please find out, write it down, and send it to your teacher and tell her what holiday it is, tell her that it's Ramadan, and tell her what else you learned, okay, about Islam. Now we're coming to the end of our lesson, and I want to tell you what you can do now. Now you can help organize someone's day who observes Ramadan. Do you remember with that graphic organizer when we had the different pictures, we were able to figure out what happens in the wee hours of the morning, you have the suhar, then during the daylight hours you don't eat or you fast, um, then in the evening when the sun goes down, you have the iftar, the big meal together, okay? So you can help them organize, that's how they spend their day. You can also categorize Ramadan observances. Remember we learned the three different categories, charity, discipline, and communal celebration. And you can identify the foods eaten in different countries during Ramadan. Remember, we learned about the different cookies and pastries in the different countries, Egypt, India, and Pakistan. All right? So I hope you enjoyed my lesson. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.